This is a story of a young kestrel pair, Jeff and Jenny. I've followed Jeff's story since he hatched, watching him grow from an inexperienced fledgling to confident bachelor. Jeff meets Jenny. And the first time pair welcome three healthy chicks. But tragedy strikes when Jeff disappears. The story begins last May, as Jeff's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Kes, care for their tiny hatchlings. The chicks were only a few days old, but Mrs. Kez disappears, leaving Jeff and his siblings at risk. When Mrs. Kez hasn't returned 10 hours later, I decide to intervene, taking the six chicks out for a health check. The older three are strong enough to go back into the nest, but three are small, cold and weak and need to be cared for. The youngest chick, Jeff, is so weak he could have died. But with regular feeds, I managed to bring him back from the brink. And after a week in my care, Jeff and the other chicks are ready to go back into the nest, where they'll be cared for by Mr. Kez. As the chicks grow, I'm around to lend a hand, visiting the nest regularly with a bit of extra food. His fluffy appearance makes Jeff easy to pick out, and he's always up front at mealtimes. The chicks are soon big enough for identification rings. So I've made this trip many times over the last few weeks, heading up there to feed these kestrels, but today's different. Today is ringing day, so we're gonna be putting identification rings on these chicks. There's the little one. And Jeff is first to get his. All right, Gene, I can't wait to show you these ones. Oh, my God. There we go, this is the smallest one. Ringing the chicks doesn't hurt them in any way. And the unique ring number is added to a national database, so the birds can be identified in the future. This is a little chick going back in, and I'm particularly fond of this one because we nearly lost it when I brought it round from the brink. Oh, back where they're supposed to be. Finally, it's time for the chicks to fledge. One by one, the older chicks take to the wing. But youngest Jeff isn't ready to go just yet. He needs a bit more help from me. Hey, love. I've got quite attached to this little kestrel. A few days later, he's ready to fly too. Over the following months, Mr. Kez's fledglings start to move away. Though one of them seems to like it here and stays on. It's great that this one has stuck around, but I can't get a good view of the ID ring, so I'm not sure which chick this is just yet. In the meantime, Mr. Kez starts courting again. and he seems to be courting one of his own chicks from this year. Not much is known about inbreeding in kestrels, so it's interesting to watch. And 
when I finally read the ring number, I'm surprised to see it's Jeff. Young kestrels of both sexes look similar to adult females. And with this behaviour, it looks like Jeff might actually be female. In December, Mr. Kez sadly disappears. And Jeff takes over the territory. But there's another twist. Over the following weeks, Jeff's brown feathers start to molt. His head and rump start to turn grey. The characteristic markings of a male. Now, this male kestrel is keen to scout out his patch. Visiting each nest. In late March, Tawny Owl Luna is brooding four eggs. But Jeff is interested in her nest. He hops to the entrance. And goes inside. But the tawny owl is much bigger and he makes a swift exit. Jeff is only 10 months old and this is probably his first fight. You'd think he'd learned his lesson, but later that day, Jeff's back. As Luna checks her eggs, he enters the nest. He goes for it, but she quickly turns on him, grabbing at him with her talons. It's hard to see behind Luna's wings, but it doesn't look good for Jeff. He finally breaks free and makes his escape. Luna calls out. That was quite a fight. Thankfully, it seems all her eggs are unharmed. And Jeff is seen the next day, still in one piece. There's some blood on his feathers, but incredibly he looks okay. Hopefully he'll think twice before taking on a tawny owl again. Jeff soon has his first encounters with females too. He's not even a year old and he's looking for a nest. And calling for a mate. A female shows up. But he's new to this and he chases her off. He still has a bit of learning to do. On the 4th of May, Jeff turns one year old. At this age, Kestrels become sexually immature. And now Jeff's reached this milestone, he looks more confident and ready to start a family of his own. I soon spot him with a new female. I decide to name her Jenny and interested in the sycamore stump nest. Just before dawn, I head to my hide to see if I can capture them on camera. The good thing about kestrels, they always call before they come in. And this is Jeff, the male kestrel. 
Jeff started calling. The female must be around. Oh, look at them bowing there. She's just arrived on the branch. This is the kind of bowing you're gonna get from a young male. He's so enthusiastic. Oh, look at that, the mating. That's amazing. That's a sure sign they're gonna nest here. And he's just headed into the nest. She's going to join him now. It's always amazing to witness these early courtship displays. She's gonna go in. And I've got a live stream into the nest here. So I can see her inside the nest as well. And it looks like she's gonna nest great now. Jeff's back with a mouse for the female. A food pass like this is an essential step in kestrel courtship. Jeff is proving he can provide for the female and their future chicks. I've known this kestrel since he was just a few days old and it's absolutely brilliant to see he's got a mate now. I think I'm gonna leave him to it now. But it's gonna be interesting to see how this develops over the next week or so. And hopefully we'll get some eggs. It's early May and the breeding season is now in full swing. Both Jeff and Jenny are young birds and this is their first time pairing up. It's been brilliant watching them learning the ropes. The pair have decided Sycamore Stump is the perfect spot to raise their first brood and it's fascinating to watch as they solidify their bonds. Jeff is busy hunting to bring in food for Jenny. These gifts prove he'll be able to care for her and their future brood. And the pair are mating regularly, whatever the weather. On the 12th of May, Jenny heads inside and digs an nest scrape as she prepares to lay. Jeff arrives to check on her and the pair call to one another. It's just incredible to see the bond they formed. And as Jenny begins contractions, Jeff stands guard outside. After about five minutes, Jenny stands, a sign she's finished laying. And not long after, she leaves the nest, revealing her first egg. Gestural eggs are usually a darker chestnut brown, but sometimes first eggs can be pale like this one. While Jenny takes a break, Jeff's around to defend the nest. And when he enters, he sees the egg for the very first time. He seems fascinated, standing over it and checking it over with his beak and talons. Despite being new to this, they're already working well together. When Jeff leaves, Jenny's soon in to take over. 
and she places her foot on the egg, almost as if proudly claiming it. Kestrel eggs are incubated straight away. Instead, brooding typically begins when the third egg has been laid. So rather than resting inside the nest, Jenny sits out in the entrance to stand guard. And with threats nearby, she's right to be cautious. Later, as Jenny rests, a barn owl swipes at her as it flies past. The kestrels are going to need to be vigilant. Now the first egg has been laid, it won't be long before more follow. In the meantime, the pair get used to their new roles. Even before incubation has started, they're taking it in turns to guard the nest. And Jeff takes some time to practice his brooding technique. Kestrels lay eggs two days apart, so I'm keeping a close eye on the cameras. Jenny heads inside and settles in. It looks like she's ready. As she stands up, she begins contractions and soon reveals a second egg. By comparison, the first egg looks so pale. Jeff brings in a freshly caught vole for Jenny. He's working hard to provide for his mate. Over the next four days, Jenny lays a third egg. And then a fourth to complete the clutch. With laying complete, the pair now move on to the important job of incubation. For the next month, the eggs must be kept at the perfect temperature. Jeff and Jenny have already established a great routine of taking turns. But now it's time for Jeff to incubate the eggs for the first time. He stands over the eggs, working out the best angle. and eventually shuffles down into the perfect position. All that practice has paid off, but as he hears Jenny outside, it's time for another changeover. Over the following weeks, the pair work together like clockwork despite their inexperience. And it's interesting to see their roles developing. Both take turns brooding, but Jenny does the lion's share. She's always on the night shift and ready for action when barn owls come calling. When the chicks hatch, she'll be the one to stay at the nest to protect and feed them. Meanwhile, Jeff brings in regular food deliveries, providing his partner with plenty of food during the long days of incubation. He's showing Jenny he'll be a capable hunter once the chicks hatch. And Jeff does his bit brooding too though he often uses this time for a well-earned nap. But in the afternoon, as Jenny rests, Van Aldrea lands outside. Jenny lunges at the intruder, and he quickly takes flight. When she's sure the threat is over, Jenny returns to the eggs. No harm done.
It's now 30 days since incubation began and Jenny's starting to look restless. These are her first ever eggs, but she seems to know what comes next. She's shuffling a lot and rearranging the eggs nestled under her feathers. Just before 5 a.m., she lifts her wing, revealing the first chick. Only 17 minutes later, I spot a second hatchling too. Jenny pulls the eggshells from under her and gently nibbles the edges. They're full of nutrients and she'll need to be in prime condition to raise her chicks. She hops up to the entrance. And when she sets off, Jeff arrives for his shift. He heads in and sees the chicks for the first time. After a quick look, he gets to work keeping them warm. This is fascinating. Male kestrels aren't known to brood chicks. I've only seen one male kestrel do this before. Jeff's dad, Mr. Kez. Jeff seems intrigued by the hatchlings and it's so touching to see him gently check them over with his beak. Soon he sets off out and it's Jenny's turn back in the nest. While Jenny is busy brooding, Jeff is on the hunt. He returns at speed to deliver his catch and Jenny flies out to collect it from him. It's a lizard, a real delicacy for kestrels. And Jenny gets to work, tearing it into small mouthfuls to feed the chicks. So this is absolutely magic to watch. The chicks getting the very first feed. Later on, she repositions, showing off her third chick breaking out of its egg. And as she lifts off, it's amazing to see it, still wet from hatching. As the evening draws in, Jenny hops to the entrance. And flies off to collect more food. She soon returns with another meal for the hatchlings. It's been a busy day. In the morning, Jenny and her three chicks are looking great. But there's still no sign of the fourth egg hatching. It's a warm day and Jenny begins gular fluttering. This is when birds open up the mouth and breathe quickly to cool down, similar to a panting dog. As it's so hot out, the chicks don't need brooding full time, but she's still keen to ensure the egg is warm enough. By the end of the day, there's still just three chicks. Kestrel chicks tend to hatch over about two days. So when there's no developments by the third night, 
it seems the brood is complete. I don't know why that fourth egg didn't hatch, but three is still a great brood size. First time parents Jeff and Jenny have done so well. It's been incredible to watch them pair up, lay eggs, and welcome three healthy hatchlings. They've now got the tough job of raising the chicks, when I'm sure these hard-working kestrels are up to the challenge. Male kestrels are the main hunters, so it's Jeff's job to bring in food for the chicks, while Jen is the one that actually feeds them. Jenny tears the mouse into bite-sized pieces. She's careful to ensure that each chick gets their share. And with these hard-working new parents, the chicks are developing well. Now at three days old, they're looking much more alert. more active too. But they're never alone for long. After a short break outside, Jenny's back in to care for them. The chicks rely on her to keep them warm. They won't be able to regulate their own temperature until they're at least a week old. While Jenny is busy looking after the chicks, Jeff spends his time hunting. To give the kestrels a helping hand, I also leave some food out for them. Jeff visits the feeding post every day to pick up extra food for the family. Around midday, he stops for a bite. But something seems off. He looks up, and a red kite swoops in. As the kite swoops in again, Jeff seems to mob it. And after an aerial battle, Jeff flies off out of sight. Red kites are a serious threat to kestrels, so I'm relieved when Jeff flies in 40 minutes later, looking unharmed. But he doesn't return to the nest that day. Thankfully, the following morning, Jeff's back in action, returning to the nest with a lizard he's caught. Despite yesterday's conflict, he's still providing for the chicks. And when Jenny heads out later, he even goes inside to check on them. With the way this pair are working together, it's amazing to think this is their first ever brood. The chicks are now five days old, and under the parents' care, they're growing fast. It's mid-June and hotting up outside, so they can be left alone for longer periods now. They huddle together to stay warm, but Jenny's soon back to brood them. Later, when she heads out, Jeff arrives at the entrance. He's brought food for the chicks and calls out for Jenny. Feeding the chicks isn't usually the male's job, but since there's no sign of her, he takes matters into his own hands. He's brought a morsel and carefully feeds a chick. This is extraordinary behavior. Male kestrels aren't known to feed chicks. I've only seen one male kestrel do this before, 
Jeff's dad, Mr. Kez. Jeff really seems to take after his father. The chicks are almost a week old now, and they've more than doubled in size since hatching. Jenny ensures that each chick is well fed. Jeff's delivering plenty of food. When she's out, he's around to watch the chicks. And he seems fascinated by them. Jenny still feeds the chicks most of their meals. But Jeff continues to amaze, helping out from time to time. although he's not always sure what size of food they can manage. It's now the last week of June and the chicks are 11 days old. At midday, Jeff makes a visit to the feeding post, grabbing some food to deliver to the family. After feeding the chicks, Jenny settles in to brood. Although it's not easy now they're this size. In the evening, she heads up to the entrance. Jeff hasn't been seen all afternoon. Jenny seems unsettled. And I'm getting worried too. She looks out from the nest all evening. All night and into the following morning. Jeff visits the feeding post multiple times a day without fail, but there's no sign of him. Around midday, Jenny leaves the nest and heads out to collect the extra food. I'm worried something's happened to Jeff, so I take a look at the cameras to see if I can spot him. There's no sign of Jeff where I'd expect to see him. So there's this from last week where I had an altercation with a red kite. With such a sudden disappearance, I'm worried he's been predated or killed. When there's no sign of him the following morning, I'm pretty sure Jeff's gone for good. Having followed his story since he hatched last year, Jeff was a very special kestrel to me. I was able to help when his mother sadly disappeared, so I got to know him well. It's heartbreaking he's gone at just a year old, and it just shows how tough life is for these wild animals.
Jenny can't venture too far from the nest to hunt herself. But she knows to get food from the feeding post. It's clear that the chicks are getting hungry. So I'm giving her a hand. I'm just heading out to put some food on the post and I've got extra in here for Jenny and the chicks. Jenny soon arrives to collect more. And the chicks are eager when she enters to feed. Over the next few days, Jenny becomes a regular visitor to the post. I'm putting out extra mice to replicate wild prey. And the chicks' appetites are soon satisfied. I'm hoping with a little bit of help from me, all these chicks will survive. Thanks to Jeff and Jenny's hard work, these chicks were given a great start in life. But with the sad loss of Jeff, Jenny is going to have to work even harder to care for them alone. And with a bit of help from me, I'm sure she's got what it takes. One of Jenny's eggs didn't hatch this year, and it's still in the nest, as a kestrel won't remove an unhatched egg unless it breaks. The chicks are now two weeks old and still covered with a layer of fluffy down, but their developing feathers are starting to poke through. At mealtimes, they're getting more boisterous, calling at Jenny as she delivers prey. One snatches the mouse, pulling the meal away and protecting it with its wings. This behavior is known as mantling. It's wonderful to see the falcon spirit shining through in such a young bird. But despite the chick's can-do attitude, it hasn't worked out how to feed itself just yet. Jenny's doing a great job caring for her brood. Regularly delivering the food I leave out. But now the chicks are older, she can spend more time away from the nest. She sets off to hunt for the first time since Jeff disappeared. She returns with a vole she's caught, which is once again snatched by a hungry chick. But Jenny's persistent, grabbing the meal back and tearing it up for her brood. It's now July and the chicks are growing fast. At 18 days old, they haven't needed brooding for about a week. Though Jenny never strays far. Day by day, they're becoming more capable. And can soon tear up their own food. As the feathers develop, they start flapping practice. It's vital they master this if they're gonna fledge in just under two weeks. And as they grow in confidence, one chick even peeks out of the entrance for the very first time.
Jenny's working so hard as a single parent. Bringing in food regularly. And keeping her chicks safe. She doesn't spend her nights inside with them now. Instead, guarding the entrance. But when she falls asleep, she doesn't hear a barn owl landing on the branch. Barn owls fly almost silently. So it's only when it takes off she reacts. Just as she swiped into the nest. Kestrel struggled to see in the dark, so Jenny looks completely bewildered. But her chicks are safe and sound inside. The following day, Jenny's back in action, despite last night's ordeal. And she's providing for the chicks, whatever the weather. She's truly proven herself as a great mother. Over the following days, the chicks are getting more curious about the world outside. The kestrel chicks have started poking their head out of the nest, so I'm gonna sit in the hide and see if I can film them. The hide's just here, and this tunnel means they don't see my approach. I get into position and soon spot a chick. And a second joins it. Now the chicks are spending time in the entrance. Jenny can deliver to them easily. Why oh, here she comes. Since the entrance is occupied, she's perched down at the base. There's the third chick too. At this stage, it's difficult to tell if they're male or female. I've been following these chicks on screen for the last three weeks, but this is the first time I've seen them all with my own eyes. As fledging day approaches, Jenny's bringing in more food to build their strength. The chicks are so curious, looking out of the entrance for most of their days. There's now more space inside for flapping. and the nest is carpeted with their down. They're getting more confident. One even steps up to the ledge. And with all this growing, they've got quite an appetite. Calling frantically when Jenny delivers. fighting amongst themselves to get another mouthful. As Jenny delivers their next meal, she enters the nest and starts tearing it up for them. They've been able to feed themselves for over a week now but she's still keen to ensure they're each getting their share. But when she's not around, they're learning to fend for themselves. 
and by mid-July, the only thing that can keep them from the entrance is bad weather. At first light, a chick ventures to the entrance. They're now a month old and look ready to fledge. At midday, the eldest chick scrambles out of the nest for the first time. It's a tentative start and it's soon back inside. But that evening, it tumbles out again. The other chicks watch on, fascinated. The fledgling makes its way back home. And after all this excitement, the chicks settle in for the night. In the morning, the chicks waste no time heading outside. It's not even 5 a.m. and the fledgling's keen to get back out to explore. This time, taking flight with confidence. The other chicks still look a bit hesitant. Jenny lands in to check on their progress. And the sibling lands on top too. This seems to motivate the middle chick. It soon fledges too, joining its sibling on top of the nest. The pair spend hours hopping around. Before taking flight. Leaving the chick alone in the nest. But not for long. Half an hour later, the two fledglings return. Jenny does too. It's just amazing to see them all together. But as night falls, there's just two in the nest. As the sun rises, the fledgling hops back up to the entrance. And the chick soon joins it. When the fledgling leaves, the chick seems to start warming up. Soon, with the other chicks watching on, the final chick fledges too. For the first time in months, the nest is empty.
but this isn't the last till Sea of the Kestrels. The chicks may have fledged now, but they won't be independent until they're about a month old. Until then, Jenny will care for them, providing them with food as they learn to hunt for themselves. And the nest is still a hub of activity. After a shaky start, the fledglings are soon confident on the wing. Exploring further around the garden and bothering Jenny at the feeding post. This Kestrel story has been an emotional roller coaster. It was so special following Jeff as he grew from inexperienced fledgling to confident bachelor. He soon met Jenny, the first time pair had eggs, and welcomed three healthy chicks. Under their care, the chicks grew fast. But tragedy struck when Jeff disappeared. But with a bit of help from me, Jenny was able to care for the brood. All three chicks successfully fledged. And as they set off to establish their lives elsewhere, Jenny has proved what a fantastic mother she is. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to see more. Here's a taste of what you'll enjoy seeing on this channel.